Thank you very much for um, inviting me to this very interesting uh, and I think also important uh, symposium. And as I said, I'm really glad to be uh, back on Ireland and especially here on the West Coast, where I spent the summer many years ago. About a year ago, I was commissioned by Klister, that is the Swedish word for glue, uh, a network of 20 or so small contemporary visual art organizations in Sweden. Together with the uh, Swedish Exhibition Agency, they asked me to write a report that focused on their work and contribution to society. The task resulted in no exceptions, or as it is in Swedish, inga undantag, uh, that was presented earlier this autumn. The report is available in a PDF format on the website of the Klister Halls and the Swedish Exhibition Agency. A book and an English version are, are on the way. Maybe I should say something about the title, because the Swedish word undantag uh, does not only mean exception. It also has a spatial meaning, denoting a small cabin where the old farmer, who was no longer able to work, was put aside and had to live on handouts for the rest of his life. My starting point was a paradox. On the one side, we have never lived in a world so full of images and visual artifacts. On the other side, it is very much up to the individual to orientate herself in this new landscape. At least in Sweden, art education is marginalized in the schools, Art criticism is marginalized in the media, and art history is marginalized in academia. And above all, artists who are not successful in the global art market are often treated as incomprehensible and annoying recipients of subsidies, as are the contemporary art halls. They are viewed as exceptions from the rationality and efficiency that supposedly rule a late modern welfare state as Sweden. A trustworthy indication of the political priorities in a society is the state budget. This is how the government of Sweden values visual art. It receives less than 1% of the cultural budget, and the tendency has been declining over the last decade. At the same time, I might add, uh, the uh, cultural budget has increased by approximately 15%. At the same time, there is a rising debate on both sides of the Atlantic on how to understand and evaluate art and culture. Governmental agencies and universities, civil society and artists organizations are involved in developing methods and languages to get a better grasp of the contribution of art and culture. This is, of course, a reaction to a situation characterized by the consequences of neoliberal and neoconservative assaults on the integrity and intrinsic value of, of the arts and humanities. And this is just a few of them. In the report, I raise really two questions. Firstly, what are small contemporary art halls good at? And secondly, what are they good for? I also raise an additional question. Are there any connections be between the value of art and the value of democracy? I come back to this question and uh, at least provisional answer to them. But I also want to make a reservation. Uh, the report, no exceptions, is no evaluation in itself. The report is rather to be read 
as a pilot study of the possibility or necessity of making relevant evaluations of organizations such as contemporary art tools. And I want to stress relevant uh, evaluations. My methods have been quite simple. Uh, they've included interviews and observations, as well as annual reports and literature in the field of, of value. This is a map uh, of the uh, Klister network in, in Sweden. Uh, as you can see, they are spread all over country, from Luleå in the north to uh, Lund, Malmö in the south. There's a cluster of Klister uh, in the Stockholm region uh, and uh, in the east and, and uh, quite a few around Gothenburg in, in, in the west. Uh, the halls are organized in different ways. Half of them are run by local government. Some are non-profit organizations, still other uh, foundations. As you can see, uh, the turnover uh, is also uh, quite different between the, dif between the different uh, art halls. Uh, Bild Museet, the one to, the le to your left, uh, is uh, quite big with an, with an turnover of uh, 22 million krona. That is approximately 300,000, no, 3 million uh, euro. Uh, and they have 12 full-time employees, while one of the smaller ones, like the one on the far right, Konsthal C, in the suburb of Stockholm, had a turnover of 1.4 million krona and four people sharing one and a half job. You can see the number of employees in the deal. Uh, the average is like six uh, full time in each uh, Klister Hall. Premises and staff uh, are the big costs for for all of the, of the halls. The art halls that are run by local government are often fully financed by public means. Uh, that is not to say that they receive uh, enough uh, means, but they are fully uh, uh, financed by public means. Only one of the Klister Halls owns its own premises. Some of them get income from letting out to restaurants and other tenants, or from external commissions as uh, curators, lecturers, etc. Their budget for marketing and further training resources uh, are extremely low, if you, like you can see here. This is in thousand krona, not million krona, as the former statistics. <coughs> Many of the <coughs> Klister halls don't have any budget at all for training or marketing. So to sum up, uh, these are some of the obstacles that the Klister Halls face. High rents for premises, small staff, insufficient further training resources, insufficient marketing resources, increasing bureaucratization, and irrelevant irre public discourse. Uh, I will make two comments on, on the last two points. On bureaucratization, a tendency in Sweden is that civil servants and regional policy makers more and more interfere with art and cultural organizations. Often they are doing so for the best of reasons, to promote gender equality, uh, integration, or whatever. But the consequence is nevertheless devastating. 
and a remark on the irrelevant public discourse. Uh, as a result of the marginalization of the art critique and the absence of a serious art discussion in the media, the field is open for journalists looking for selling scandals and for politicians looking for populist support. So these are the obstacles. What then are the crystal holes good at? Well, they are providing space for young artists and not yet established art forms. They are developing new ways of curating and presenting. Uh, they are good at cooperating between and interconnect different spheres of society, like the art world, the ed educational system, civil society organizations. Uh, and they are good at interconnecting different levels of society local, regional, national, European, global. They are also providing inspirational meeting places. That is, they are good at expanding the public sphere. <coughs> Maybe a trickier question is, what are the Clister Halls good for? In order to observe that creation of value, I think we have to both enlarge and sharpen our perspective in four ways. Uh, and I use here the help of four analysts. Firstly, we have to uh, adopt a longer perspective with the help of Sarah Thelwell's deferred value concept, for instance. Secondly, we have to adopt a wider perspective with the help of the Italian uh, cultural economist uh, Pierluigi Sacco and his concept of system-wide cultural districts. Thirdly, we have to have a better focus. Uh, and here I take help from Mark Moore's concept of public value, as Jason mentioned before. And fourthly, uh, we have to adopt a relevant language and uh, no pseudo-quantities, as the Swedish philosopher Sven-Erik Liedman calls, calls it. Uh, I come back to all these four. So, firstly, we have to adopt a longer perspective. The time of art is larger than now. <coughs> These are sediments in a mountain. Art is no mountain. In art, sediments are not buried underground. All layers interfere with each other. The past is present. Contemporary art is both before and after its time. The Russian cultural historian Mikhail Bakhtin has put it beautifully. Everything that only belongs to the present dies with it. Familiar with Paktin? Yes? Yeah. He's one of his favorite. But art's time also expands into the future. The capacity of small visual art organization to promote new artists that later becomes successful, uh, is called deferred value by the British consultant uh, Sarah Thelwell in her report Size Matters from 2011. I saw it uh, at the uh, table uh, in the room. <coughs> but as she also points out, small art halls are seldom receiving any benefits from their success, whether in monetary or symbolic form. Instead, big, big institutions often realize the value originally uh, created in small art organizations. Or as uh, Sarah puts it uh, herself, artworks accumulate value throughout their lifetimes in both the public and private sectors, 
but the small organizations which originated them are not the ultimate beneficiaries <coughs> of these processes. Secondly, we have to adopt a wider perspective. The room of art is larger than here. This is an ecosystem, a simple one from nature. This is a somewhat more complicated or complex uh, <coughs> ecosystem in society. Uh, <coughs> it's from Silicon Valley. Concepts like ecosystem, infrastructure and cluster are frequent in today's economic theory. Also when it comes to the economic dimensions of culture. The Italian cultural economist Pierluigi Sacco has developed a theory about this that he calls system-wide cultural districts. According to Sacco, the function of culture is no longer to uh, <coughs> entertain and legitimize power uh, like in pre-modern time. And it's not to be a, or at least not only to be a meaningful and educational free time activity like in the early stages of welfare state. It's, not, uh, uh, it's neither not to supply the creative industries with content like it recently uh, was chosen to be, but it is to be system-wide. That is to penetrate and fertilize the entire social and economic life in cities and regions. Culture is both catalyst and engine in local development. Or with the professor's own words, and here comes something. Read it for yourself and reflect. Yes, I agree. It is complicated, almost incomprehensible. But more importantly than uh, to uh, immediately get the meaning of this quotation is the fact that Sacco's theories and models have proven to uh, pull off tests in reality in uh, very many cases uh, that I know of. Thirdly, we need a better focus uh, if we are to evaluate uh, the work that is being done in art halls. Cluster halls are in the service of the public, not the profit. What does that mean? <coughs> this is a photo of a car factory in my hometown, Gothenburg. It's Volvo, what it produces Volvo cars. This is a photo of a contemporary art hall and Klister member in Gothenburg. It is called Röda Sten, or the Red Stone. And it used to be an uh, electricity plant. Uh, I would argue that it still is, but in another way, if you know what I mean. Both the car factory and the art hall are important for Gothenburg, but in different ways. They are creating different kinds of value. In 1994, Harvard professor Mark Moore wrote a book on the importance of distinction between private companies and public organizations. He called it creating public value. In 
In the early 80s, he was instructed by his peers to study private business models in order to improve the functioning of the public sector. After several years of work in the field, Moore reached the conclusion that there are fundamental differences between private companies and organizations in the service of the public. Instead of promoting the ideology, ideology of neoliberal new public management, he, be, he became one of its fiercest critics. Moore's strategic triangle shows that the creation of public value is a process of multifaceted negotiations between several parties, not the least between the employees of an organization and the public slash users. But to be relevant for the case of contemporary art halls, the theory of public value uh, has to be assisted by concepts more specifically adjusted to the artistic and cultural context, that is, language. Fourthly, uh, to make relevant evaluations, we need relevant language. Numbers cannot express the full meaning of art or art halls. This is a famous quote from the so-called Chicago School, uh, the top one, I mean. If you can, cannot measure it, you cannot manage it. And, and it, uh, it tells the, the, the soul of, of, uh, of uh, this uh, ideology, I think. The second one is from, from the Swedish philosopher that I mentioned uh, before. A pseudo-quantity is a quality like love, knowledge, art, reduced to quantities uh, like numbers, it misspelled there, like numbers, when it more accurately can be characterized verbally. The dominant neoliberal evaluation paradigm is new public management. As you know, it is I inspired by private enterprise and suggests that public organization should be run as private companies. Key words are management thinking, efficiency, measurability, the same mechanic standards as for a core plant. But as uh, Sven Eklidman has pointed out, everything cannot be reduced to quantities. During the last decade, there has been a reaction against the shortcomings of new public management in the field of arts and culture. The influential US think tank, Rand Corporation, published a, a study that has argued against the tendency of focusing on the instrumental benefits of art. And this is uh, a common argument for <coughs> a great deal of the literature that I have studied, uh, the return to a more articulate language uh, in order to grasp, grasp the, the uh, value creation that is going on in, in uh, organizations like Art Tools. In the UK, uh, the liberal think tank Demos, that also was mentioned before, I think, uh, has explicitly related to uh, Mark Moore and his uh, public value approach. John Holden has pointed out that the dominant instrumental language forces art and culture into the role of uh, supplicant. And as he also has pointed out, while both military defense and culture are uh, to a large extent financed by taxes, only culture is described as dependent on subsidies. And the force in, in that description, I think we should 
be aware of. Um, and instead of subsidies, talk of investment, for instance. Yeah, you can read the quote for yourself. So, to sum up what the uh, Clisto Halls at least potentially are good at, or good for, sorry. They are good, at, uh, uh, they are good for innovation and promotion of young artists and new art forms uh, and uh, curatorial innovations that benefit not only them but the entire art sector. Their cooperation and interconnecting between different spheres and levels nourish not only the art sector but also the social and economic life of the city or region. And their inspiring reflection and dialogue strengthen the public sphere in a way that is crucial for democracy. And their ambition, maybe I didn't mention that, but almost all of the Clisto Halls uh, say that one of their ambition is to link together local community and the uh, forefront of contemporary art. This ambition may seem far-fetched and unrealistic, but I think it also expresses the, that art needs space and audience to come into existence, and that art halls need ar artistic quality to create public value. So there is some kind of of uh, interconnection between uh, art and, and democracy. <coughs> so, these are my preliminary <coughs> conclusions. The Clista Halls are part of and contribute to local and global ecosystems. The art world, civil society, education, public debate. The creation of value that takes place in the Clisto Halls must be viewed in a longer and broader perspective than a fiscal year and audience numbers. Relevant evalu evaluations must acknowledge the meaning of public value and the need for articulate language. And through their work, the Clisto Halls prove the con uh, potential connections between the values of art and the values of democracy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.